Three, two, one, and we're live. Welcome once again to HeroQuest fans. Here we are for part two of the Space Crusade StarQuest unboxing. And uh, this is a long overdue video, of course, as you all know. I've been wanting this game for a while and finally got my copy. So in the previous video, we were able to go through some stuff but I kind of had to rush through it, and so we're doing a part two here. Talk a little bit more about the game. And this is, I just want to stress, this is a game I've never actually played before. So it's not quite the same as talking about Hero Quest, you know, reminiscing about the old days. This is basically me discovering the game, reacting to it, comparing it to what I know. So I hope you enjoy it, in spite of the fact that I'm not a... Uh, veteran expert on the game like some people out there and there's lots of other videos about uh, Space Crusade so if you want to watch those videos go right ahead there's a lot of cool ones from um, Always uh, Bored Never Boring, Squidmar, I think Amalgamash, a few other people have done some just extensive videos and they're really cool let's get a little uh, swig there, cheers dead gamer All right. So we're going to open the sturdy box here, set that aside wherever I can, and as you can see we've got the uh, four boards here, so I'm just going to move this out of the way here for just a second, Oop, that's not the one, there we go. So we got our slideshow in the corner there, that's just me showing off uh, some different photos that I found of a lot of stuff from the German edition of the game. So the German edition has its own storyline, which is different than the uh, English version. Of course, I mean, it was released in many languages, similar to HeroQuest. But I'm going to go ahead and start off just by inventorying all these pieces. As I explained in the previous video, this is a, what you call a dungeon crawler. It's a tabletop fantasy game. It's not really a role-playing game any more than HeroQuest was. In some ways it's like a sci-fi version of HeroQuest. Um, in other ways it's just its own its own thing. Now I've never played Space Hulk. I've never played Warhammer 40,000, although I do have a Warhammer 40k set, which I inherited from a family member here. This is like a starter kit, Assault on Black Reach. This is from 2008. So this set that I have here, this is supposed to include a bunch of Space Marines and a bunch of Orcs, but it only has Orcs. And I thought, you know, I sat on my shelf for years and I kind of worked on it a little bit, but I thought, oh, cool. You know, I could use these miniatures in this game. So kind of as a supplement, but that'll be my homebrew. Now I'm already thinking of homebrew and I haven't even played the regular game, but that's okay. So you take everything out of the box and you've got this plastic, like, cheap candy tray, whatever you want to call it, thing. There's really nothing to it. I mean, I guess it kind of protects the box a little bit. It reinforces it a little. I guess if you spill your drinks in there, it's not going to ruin the box, but... I don't know. It's got a little thing you can put cards in. This, I guess, these, uh can rest there like that. See these are just sliders so this tells you um, you've got sh so each player controls a squad as I explained. So you've got the Blood Angels which are the red Space Marine, you've got the Imperial Fists which are the yellow and then the Ultramarines which are the blue. And this lets you keep track of what weapons you have because it's a five-man squad. You've got your commander and you've got four other space marines. And your goal is to go through the dungeon, so to speak, the space dungeon, I guess. They call it a space hulk. So it's like an abandoned ship or a ghost ship or a pirate ship filled with monsters. you got to clear out the monsters and make it out safely. And you get points for every enemy that you destroy and you lose points every time one of your guys gets uh, killed. But you have your choice of weapons. And one weakness of the game that was pointed out to me by several people, and I didn't quite believe it at first, because I thought, oh, gee, these... The weapons are easily removable. Well, it depends. So let's let's take a look 
we'll get our big big close-up camera back here so okay let's check out this guy so this is a commander because he has no helmet on see how he's got this big weapon well it's pretty easy to gently it was just one peg like work it loose of course these have probably been attached for like 30 years 20 years ah you can barely get it out of there well anyway i'm just gonna be careful but yeah some of them come out easily and some of them are just really stuck in there so one mistake i made see this weapon here this has got like this like bayonet on the end get in range there so i was pulling on it trying to get it up and i bent it bent it and since the, the nature of this plastic it's like styrene it'll uh, give stretch marks like stress stress marks on the plastic so as you're like pulling the weapons off and putting them back on pull them off put them back you now they get weakened and they get broken now i thought well what you could do is um you could take maybe a, a little bit of sandpaper and just kind of like sand down the, the peg on the weapon so it fits in there you know a little bit more loosely and not just like wedged in there you definitely don't want to glue it because you're supposed to be able to swap weapons so your commander has a set of weapons he's supposed to use and then the other guys have weapons they're supposed to use the weakest weapon is the bolter it's this little pistol here now they all have these backpacks that both stay on so i guess you could glue those on if you wanted and you don't have to paint them if you don't want to but let's uh let's do the inventory so we've got one of these for each team and you can see these little uh these little depressions here this is where the rank badges go so i'll show you what those look like so these little bags i mean were supplied by the seller but in reality all the pieces would have started off on sprues so these plastic like uh, grids well no this is the chaos one that wouldn't go there okay so the the captain senioris this is like the highest rank you're supposed to get so let's see these are the blue guys so the red guys so what you would really do is you would put your rank here so it's like okay i have that rank and let's see that is reversed sorry about that folks still reversed oh, we got the wrong one selected yeah little technical difficulties okay there we go so captain senioris so that's that's just a kind of a way you would do it now you also get these just little colored pegs so let's say you've got the ultramarines the blue team let's say you've got a guy with a bolter you put a little peg there showing that okay you've got a guy there but you could have multiple ones so you could have the uh, missile launcher rocket launcher the plasma gun the auto cannon and the chain gun and the bolter or the pistol actually it's the carbine carbine how do you say well anyway let's uh let's do the inventory okay so we got the ultramarines the blue guys you can see these here so we've got one two three of these little blue uh, weapon counters so put them in here and we've got each of the guys so there's a the guy with the plasma gun right there space marine and they all have these these uh, generic games workshop bases around and you've got another guy with a bolter the heavy weapons guys move slower so with those two and you've got the uh, commander with his heavy bolter but he could have had a bolter and power axe you could have had well you probably wouldn't want to put a bolter on there actually one of these guys did have a bolter on the commander but the commander is their hands are slightly different so the pegs are slightly different you can see it if you look at this peg it's actually round that focus it's round but there's a square part like a flat part right here so you're supposed to just like gently line it up and just gently put it on there i guess you could put a little bit of like machine oil on there something that wouldn't damage the plastic there's the auto cannon there's the uh so the power glove and the power blade or the power sword this is for a commander so commander weapon commander weapon 
And then you've got two other weapons for the regular guys. And then, so there's the rocket launcher plasma gun. So that's a five-man squad. Now, if I had Mission Dreadnought expansion, there'd be two more blue guys. But I don't have that expansion, and that one is super expensive. So all the blue, all the ultramarines are accounted for. And then let's see what else we have. So we've got the cards. So I'm just going to show you what the cards consist of because there's like a set. So this is one player right here. One player controls the aliens, so all the bad guys, like the GM character. Um, the equivalent of Zargon, if it was for Hero Quest. And then one person would control the Ultramarines, another person controlled the Red Squad, another controlled the Blue or the Red, Yellow, Blue would each be a player. And if you're using the Eldar, that'd be another player. So it's four. It's it's meant for four players, but it can be five if you use one of the expansions. Because Eldar Attack is another expansion. I'll get to that one last. Okay, so with blue, you've got these order cards, okay? So these are for the ultramarines. See that up there? And it says order. Move it. Fire. Close assault. And there's one missing. And I believe the one that's missing, I've looked at pictures online, it's called bisections. So I'm going to print that one myself because it really doesn't make any sense to pay like $20 to get it shipped from the UK. Because this is where, I mean, shipping is, is fairly expensive to North America because this game was not released in the US or Canada. It was released in Europe. It was released, um, yeah, I think it was just a European game, really. So like Germany, UK, Spain. Italy, Netherlands, etc. But if you flip it over, notice how it's green. So on one side, it's it's kind of smooth and almost waxy. On the other side, it's more rough, textured, kind of matte. Finish. It's almost got like a, a groove in it, which is similar to the, how the box feels. So th these will shuffle very easily. But anyway. Um, on one side, it kind of tells you like what the card does, and the other one, it's more of like a story-esque way. Well, I guess this miniatures may move twice. This order should be used either to move your squad out of the danger zone. Okay, so this is like the story version, and this is the the gameplay description. So we got those, but there should be there should be four of these. There's one missing. So I can go with those guys. Then you've got your equipment cards. So depending on your rank. As you go up in rank as you win missions, the commander has to survive for you to retain your points. He's got six life points, the other guys only have one. So he can issue these orders, and it starts out, I think he only gets to use one order, but as he goes up in rank, he can use more and more. These equipment cards, I think you can get uh, four or five at a time. You get more as time goes on, but they just uh, can be used any time. On your turn whereas this can just be used once before your turn and you can move and attack or attack and move and most of the time you're shooting long range but um, with melee combat you actually you and the, the target both roll dice so the dice are here somewhere yeah the combat dice are white and red so similar to hero quest uh, these wooden dice except that they've got these numbers on them zero through three and the red ones are the heavy dice and the white ones are the light dice so it'll tell you like what you can use and you want the red dice if you can get them but anyway you've got these equipments so got one two three four five six seven eight so they're all accounted for for the ultramarines and see that symbol that's their symbol there so we've got all those. Okay, so we've got a full complement of ultramarines. I'm going to go ahead and put these guys back in the bag for now. And I actually broke my first piece, and it's just it's similar to Battle Masters. When I got my Battle Masters out, I, I broke one one piece. I was like, okay, I need to be gentle with this. This is 30 years old, and it's not museum quality or anything. But uh, these red guys, so the Blood Angels, I actually broke the backpack off of the commander because I was trying to pull it off. I don't know, if, I don't think it was glued, but still. So I gotta be more gentle. 
there's 10 year old boys, I mean, got smaller hands, but I need your parents' help. So you got the three weapon selectors there. So let's see, how would you do it? So we've got a guy with a bolter. So we put one here. Let's say we were doing it, we could record it like that. Your commander starts out with six life points, you start out with zero points. Um, and you've got another guy with a bolter. So the Blood Angels are supposed to be better with hand to hand combat. The, uh, the Imperial Fists in yellow are supposed to be better with long range, and then the, uh, the blue guys are supposed to be, the Ultramarines are supposed to be balanced. So we've got a plasma gun. Goes there. Got a missile launcher, a rocket launcher. So we put that here, and we don't have anybody using the auto cannon. So that's just to kind of remind you what you have. So we've got those types of weapons, and then we've got a spare bolter. We've got the power axe um, bolter combo for the commander. My blood red color. We've got the auto cannon. Notice the little peg. So maybe you could like file that down just a little bit. Or something. If it was too loose, you could use some little sticky tack. There's the heavy bolter for the commander. So it looks like the blood angels are all there. So I'll put those back in the package for now. And the sculpts all pretty much look the same. Just happen to be different colors. The commander just has no helmet. He's got a different pose. He's got some fancy elbow pads, or I mean, knee pads. So once again, looking at the cards, so we've got the Blood Angels here. So we've got their order cards. Once again, green on the back. See their symbol there. Fire, move it, close assault, photon grenades. So see, there is some difference differences there. And, oh yeah, these are orders. And then here's the equipment. Line grenades, melt the bomb, targeter, bionic arm, stole, close assault blades. Um, now in the German editions, these are translated differently, so they may have totally different meanings. But, uh, yeah. So one, two, three, four of those, and one, two, three, five, six, seven, eight. So these are all accounted for. You know, I should be checking the chat. So welcome to uh, Delots and Six Flags Magic Mountain viewers. Sorry about the uh, lag. We've got a little bit of lag there. But uh, yeah, this is the unboxing. So welcome to HeroQuest fans. We're just going to continue on. Now the reason I'm recording this now is because I didn't anticipate this weekend I would really have time to do more um, recording. So usually I like to do a stream on uh, Friday night. Friday afternoon-ish, like 2, 4 p.m. Central Time, and then on uh, Saturday I like to do uh, 6 to uh, six to 10, but yeah, this weekend I'm just going to be busy, so anyway. Here's the third team. These are the Imperial Fists. These are the yellow. Just to show you what I've got here. Sorry about the mess. Okay, so we got the three, four. Okay, so this has four. Maybe there were supposed to be four for each one. I thought there were only supposed to be three. But anyway, there's four there. Now, if uh, you ever had Mission Dreadnought, you'd have extra pieces. So, in any case, I've got four of these. So we've got a guy with a bolter. Fell off the base, whoops, with the missile launcher. These are the Imperial Fists. Kind of hard to see them in yellow. There. Focus, there we go. So look at the detail. Generic 
uh, Games Workshop bases. That doesn't fit on his base very well. Plasma gun, it's pretty standard. With the commander. There we go. Let's see, he's got a little more detail on him. So he's got the power axe, pistol combo, auto cannon for the last guy. And then we got these two spare bolters, heavy bolter for the commander, power blade, and power fist for the commander. So those are all the kind of four. Now I'm just happy to get this set, so I thought, you know, if a couple pieces are missing, that's all right. But really I wanted to make sure I had all the miniatures. I figured those were the hardest to replace. I wasn't going to buy a bunch of Warhammer 40,000 figures. So I have to paint them and all that nonsense. Whereas, you know, if you're missing a card or missing a token or something, you could print that off fairly easily on a piece of chipboard. So their cards, you got orders. Imperial fists by sections, move it. Heavy weapon, so it's different. Fire. So it looks like they each have one unique uh, card, more or less. So that's what it looks like on the other side. But the cards are all in good condition. These are a little smaller than Hero Quest cards. They're like a custom size. I think I wrote it down here somewhere. I actually talked about it on the last stream, so forgive me if I get the number wrong. Yeah, I don't have it written down handy, sorry. But yeah, you can just uh, watch the previous video. So those are all there. We've got equipment, we got blind grenades, multi bomb, combi weapon, targeter, suspensors, so they got some different ones, bionic eye, bolt pistols, targeter. Let's see on the other side. I'm not going to go through every single one, but you know, you can look at these on your own. Yeah, there's their symbol there. So it looks like the Imperial Fists are all accounted for. Now you've got these, what are called alien event cards. So if you're familiar with Hero Quest mods, there's a Evil Wizard deck for Zargon. This is already part of the game. So some of the things you can see in Star Quest or Space Crusade from 1990 uh, inspired Hero Quest fans to make mods for Hero Quest, which are kind of like the equivalent. So on the evil alien uh, or chaos player's turn, he'll draw one of these cards. So, okay, there's a suicide android, so the android explodes. Uh, mas master controls, you may open or close as many doors on the board as you wish. Wow, that's a big one. Um, orc mechanic. Now there's some controversy because it says an orc mechanic uses an experimental weapon. Any one orc miniature may fire as though he has a devastator. And as many other people making videos about Space Crusade pointed out, there are no devastators in the game. So what is it? The weapon, however, blows up. Remove the orc. So what is it meant to be? Well, in the German version, it says a plasma gun. So I guess at least that's what one set of designers thought it should be. So let's see how many cards are there. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight of these alien event cards. Notice they're in green. So Textured side, shiny, smooth side. So that's that's the base game right there. What else do they come with? Okay, so we've got these tokens. These are for the alien player. These are reinforcement tokens. And I said in the last video I'm going to have to research these, and I still have to do that. But you've got a whole bunch of these tokens. Set these cards aside for now. So there's a few that are just completely blank. It just has a grid. So I guess those are just space fillers or those decoys. But you've got several of these that have that figure on one side. Where is that supposed to be? 
it over. Oh, it's uh, Android. In Warhammer 40,000, they're called Necrons, but we're not going to bring Warhammer 40,000 into it unless, unless we have to this time. So there's 10 of those, or 10 points worth, I guess. Again, I have to read the manual, but see how many of these. One, two, three. Orcs, number five, six, Gretchen's, seven, eight, nine, ten, one's a little torn, eleven, twelve, thirteen, it's plus space ring, fourteen, oh that's the dreadnought, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 20, 30, 31, 32, 33. I might have miscounted. It's either 32 or 33. Probably 32, and I just miscounted. Sorry about that. I'll just throw those back in there. See, they were all nicely organized by the guy that sold it to me, and it's like I almost hate to set it up and, and ruin it. Just put your toys away when you're done playing with them, right? So I just put all those back in. And let's see if anybody in the chat has any questions, just go ahead and fire away. We're not done yet. I just thought I'd, I'd pause and make sure people knew that they can ask questions if they want to. Lurkin's okay, but asking questions is fun too. Yeah, the last stream it was pretty interactive because uh, we were we were reading Tyrant's Tomb from HeroQuest, and I do want to do that again. I want to do some more uh, choose your own adventure style reading, and I was inspired to do that by Covert Nerd, Covert Nerd Podcast, so covertnerd.net, pretty cool guy over there. He's interviewed me a couple of times and lots of other fans and various things, and he does interactive readings of choose your own adventure and. You know, the Dave Morris HeroQuest novels are pretty much one part Choose Your Own Adventure, one part game book, one part um, just regular story. So, there's the cards. Let's look at the dice. So, these should be familiar to HeroQuest fans. These wooden six-sided or D6 dice. It's a nice wooden dice sound. So the heavy dice have one, two, three, and then the other three faces are zeros. There's two of those. And I think the Mission Dreadnought includes more of these, but I don't have that one. Then the light dice, these white ones, are in very good shape. See, I think this was barely played compared to Hero Quest. I mean, some of the Hero Quest sets I've gotten are just, just really beat up, but they've been loved. This poor game, you know. But that's okay. We'll try to give it a good home and see if we can get some mileage out of it without, you know, breaking it and beating it down to a pulp. So it's got a 1, and it's got a 2, and the rest are all zeros. So as you can see, these are a lot weaker, these, these uh, light dice than the heavy dice. So there's six of those total. And of course, if you run out of dice, just like in Hero Quest, you just reroll. Um, okay, so we've also got the gray and blue figures. So these are monsters, finally. We're looking at monsters here. So we'll start out with these guys. These are androids, so they kind of look like s skeletons or Terminator endoskeletons from the Terminator movies, and they've got these long rifles with these big bayonets on them. Kind of reminds me of HeroQuest, you know, them holding the weapon up in the air. Not a dynamic pose, but that way you can fit a lot of them on the board without crowding. So you've got one, two, three, four of these. Of these uh, androids, or clones as they're called in the German version. And you've got three of these gene stealers. These guys are interesting. I guess these are like space femmers, maybe. They've got four arms, two in the back are more humanoid, the two in the front are like big claws. In the computer game, they only have two arms, and they're called soul suckers. 
they look different. They look more like a xenomorph alien with blade hands. But this guy, whoa, he gets like a tongue out. Kind of hard to get get the shot exactly right, but scary looking monster. And of course, they're on the box. So you've got three of those guys. These are melee only monsters. They don't have a range attack. And this particular set, you know, there's some uh, blue paint on there. That's okay. Gives a little charm. This is the Dreadnought. The infamous Dreadnought. So, yeah, it has multiple parts. So you've got this huge base. It takes up like four squares. And they put a little sticker on there. But you clip it in there. Clip the canopy on top. And you've got your choice of three weapons. So this looks like, I'm not sure what that's supposed to be. Oh, a plasma gun, an auto cannon, and a rocket launcher. And then it's got these two bolters in front. So it actually has three weapons. So when you damage it the first time, it blows off one of the weapons, then the other, and then finally it's destroyed. But I like the fact that the canopy comes off, so you could just be like, oh, it was blown away. Oh, its legs were blown off. So you got to think like a little kid, and then you can kind of enjoy it that way. So it's and in the pictures, it's beautifully painted. It looks like a hot rod from like the sixties. So that's the dreadnought. That's what it looks like, and we got the uh, androids. Not yet Necrons in the forty thousand universe, and the June Steelers, which are not yet Tyranids, depending on the lore. More bad guys. So here you've got, and actually there's two bags of these. Lots of green figures. So you've got orcs. So there's an orc. They're spelled with a K this time, so space orcs. He's got a bolter and he's got a cleaver. So there's one there. And another one with a dagger. Knife. Got one with a curved sword. Let's see what else do we have here? Got one with an axe, a hatchet. Look at that face. Ah. Ah. <laughs> Interesting little symbol on the back. So they don't quite look like 40k orcs, but I mean they're in the same same uh, same ballpark. So we got four of those, but there's more in this bag, so let's let's get them out. Get them all out. So we have the Chaos Warband here. That's what they're called. So there's another dagger one. So there's two of those. Another axe one. Two of those. Should be eight orcs. And there's a cleaver, so there's two of those. Should be one more with a sword. There are they? Two, four, six, seven. Just the missed him in these bags. There he is. He was hiding. And these guys are all one solid piece. So the pieces that the ones that come apart are, of course, the dreadnought is multiple pieces, and the space marines are multiple pieces, and so are the chaos space marines, which I'll get to in a minute. So we've got our full complement of works here. We've got eight of them. And we've also got these Gretchens. These are space goblins. You guys here? So they're doing their little dance, their little uh, jig. So this guy looks like he's got a shotgun. There's 14 of these, so let's get the orcs out of the way. And there, this guy, I don't know what you'd call that. A long gun, uh, kind of like you know, saw. Um, there's a guy with uh, another. I like that just the sculpts are just slightly different. So this just looks like a, a rifle of some kind. So there's three. This guy's got yet another variant in his weapon. They're very subtle. Okay, so there's another guy like that. I don't know how to describe him. Shotgun. I mean, I don't think it matters from figure to figure, but you could invent some stats if you wanted. These guys don't have armor. 
So this guy has a, uh, it's got a little blunderbuss end on that. So one, two, three, four, five. Oh, and that guy's got a real blunderbuss. Okay, so there's probably seven of each. Three, four, five, six. Seven. And there's probably two of each of those. There's another blunderbuss one. Another little knot on the end. Another shotgun. Okay, so there's three of those. Oop. Looks like that got a little melted there. Left it on a hot stove or what? Melted with a lighter. There's a that in. I guess, yeah. There. That. And another. See, that's what it looks like. Just that little stick. Slot of base, they call it. That's another shotgun. So there's actually four. I'm wondering if this was the original distribution or if this is a mix set because there's four shotguns. Two, two, one. You guys, this is a little long one. Of course, maybe it's special. Two, two. So I'm thinking there should be another one of these and then one less of those. But that's okay. Whatever. Oh, never mind. There he is. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen. Well, good enough. So we got 14 Gretchens, Space Goblins. And next, let's look at the Chaos Space Brains. These guys are cool looking. So we've already gone through all the green monsters. I guess they call them aliens, so they're green aliens. In HeroQuest, they're all monsters. But we know that they're just space monsters. Um, the Chaos Space Marines. So these are like corrupted. Space Marines. So we've got, first of all, the Commander. It's going to be hard to see. It's kind of a midnight blue. Look at that cool looking helmet that he's got. And those, like, antenna horns. And he's got a heavy bolter. Now these are removable, but they don't give you extra weapons. So I guess he's just got a heavy bolter. That's what he's got. But you could possibly swap them around. And actually, these weapons would fit on the regular guys, too. So, but again, you probably don't want to swap them very much. I see uh, Squidmar and a few other people have actually like removed the, the pegs and filled in the holes with these neodyme rare earth magnets. And glued them in there so they can just magnetize it. I'm not sure if I want to do that, but it's one solution people come up with. So here's like a regular Chaos Space Marine. Notice the different helmet. It's got a bolter. Got the cool backpack. And so there's basically enough for one squad of these guys. Another guy with a bolter. Chaos Space Marine. And it's not uh, it's not Space Quest. It's not Star Crusade. It's Space Crusade or Star Quest. And then there's the one with the uh, rocket launcher. So we got the rocket launcher. No plasma gun. Interesting. But a couple bolters, heavy bolter. So, five of those guys. So, we've got a full complement of Chaos Space Marines. So, we add those to the pile. Now, they've all got these black bases, but I've noticed a couple of them are odd in here. Like, they're kind of like a dark green color. So, I don't know if somebody tried to paint them or if it was just like you lost one and so you just picked one up at the store and it happened to be a slightly different color. So, I'll just throw these guys in the bag here. So miniatures are pretty cool, I'd say. Again, very reminiscent of Hero Quest, but I mean it's it's one year later. We've had a little bit of time, City Bell Miniatures Games Workshop to uh, refine their craft. I mean some things in the game they've improved upon, some things not. Like where's the GM string? I'm not sure where that is. I mean at best you've got this thing. This cardboard that shows uh, the monsters. So everybody's got fixed movement. So the orc can move six squares. The heroes are the same way. The space marines each have fixed movement. And it shows like what they attack with. So this guy fires. When he fires, is two white or uh, light combat dice. Hand to hand is two light combat dice. So it's the same for this uh, commander, the chaos space marine. Oh, the commander's here, sorry. So you get the orc. Space Marine, 
uh, Chaos Space Marine, Chaos Space Commander Marine, <laughs> Dreadnought, Android, Gene Stealer, Gretchen. So those are the types of monsters. And this is just that blue kind of rough texture on the other side. Now what you're supposed to do is you have these clips, these plastic clips. It's like this H.R. Geiger alien inspired stuff. You're supposed to take these and kind of like how did they go? I know, I can look at the box. Oh, I see, there's just... Okay, that's it. It's not that much. Look at that. Oh, it folds. Oh, I see. Duh. <laughs> Sorry. Just a new in here. I don't know how it's done. It's done soon. Okay, is that right? Everybody laugh? What's wrong? So that makes it stand up. And so you've just got this on your spot as the alien player telling you, okay, this is its stats. Or I guess you could show it to the the, the marine players saying, like, that's what you would use. So there's two plastic clips. So those are accounted for. There it is. Good job with these bags. They're just right. Now these clips, let's see, one, two, three of these T-shaped clips. And then a four, sorry, four of them. And then one of these X-shaped or cross-shaped clips. So these are used to secure these. So these are the cardboard walls, two-sided. Okay, yes, and we're gonna solve, solve once and for all whether they can pass through the doors, because everybody makes a big deal about HeroQuest and whether they can go through the door. Yes, they can go through the door, doorway. Okay. <laughs> so you'd set these up like that, and you would put a clip on top. Can't really slide into down there. Clipping them all together. Ah, see I'm doing it wrong because we're supposed to put the boards up first, the four boards together, and then put that in the center. Well, anyway, that's pretty much... I'll, uh, I'll do that thing like they used to do in old cooking shows in the 80s. They'd say, oh yeah, you've got to do all this stuff. And then they'd say, oh, and then we have one already done. And they pull it up off underneath the table and it's perfect. They obviously did before the show. So you don't have to wait for them to cook it. Okay, well, anyway. I'll probably just uh, do another video where it's already set up. But yeah, you've got these four walls. They all look very similar to one another, but they look cool. There's cardboard. So that's accounting for. Let's put these clips back. So these would be just to clip it to the to the boards. To get the four boards. So it all stands up together. I mean, the set's complete, except for there's one Ultra Moon card missing, and there's also one rank badge missing. Oh yeah, that'll be the next thing I'll show you. So, you got these rank badges. They're really tiny. Cardboard. So, don't trim your fingernails too much, because you need, to, need them to pick, it, pick these up. So, to get points, you know, you want to accomplish the secondary mission. On the back, we got the primary mission. Black on the back. Those are there. And then you've got the chaos ranks. So you've got the uh, Lord of Chaos. Nothing on the back. Chaos Warrior. Chaos Commander. Champion of Chaos. So even though you're the alien, you're you're. Uh, working with chaos there. So I think that's that's it for those ranks. Oh wait, there's supposed to be a chaos renegade, isn't there? Okay, so fine. There is there is one other token missing, so I'll have to print that one out. Yeah, it's a chaos renegade and then I can't remember if there was something else. One, two, three, four, five, six ranks. No, there's the chaos renegade. Excuse me. <laughs> so this is the basic rank that you start at and then you want to work your way to champion of chaos. So these are all accounted for. 
it's deceptive because you look at photos and they'll show these and they'll show those, but actually there's only three physical tokens. So, all right. And then the marks of chaos, these are like, as you're working your way up, you can cash them in for those big ones. So you've got that thing, I guess a monster mouth, a skull, flaming head, and some kind of like dragon Ouroboros thing. And on the other side, it's just a little one, two, three, four to remind you what they are. So those are all accounted for. Marks of Chaos. So that's the alien player keeping track of his uh, ranking. Because if you're playing one game, okay, maybe it takes an hour or two, but you could be playing for like a week, playing through all 12 of the missions. And at the end, you want to see who won. Just like when you're playing Battle Masters, you know, you could win a battle but lose the war, so to speak. That's assuming you can get your gaming group to keep playing. You can play them in any order, but it's going to be harder as time goes on. I guess uh, similar to HeroQuest, where, you know, if you're starting in the middle of the campaign, you could just say, oh yeah, you know what? Here, you just get a couple of artifacts already, or you get some extra gold or something. So in this game, you could just give them a couple extra orders. So with the blue, the Ultramarines, here are their ranks. You got Captain Senoris, which is the highest. In the German version, there are different ones. There's like Colonel and General and stuff like that. So Sergeant is where you start. And you end up at Captain Senoris. But if you flip this over, okay, Lieutenant Primus, Captain Primus, and then just nothing. So there's five of those ranks. So blue is accounted for. And then we've got. Uh -oh. Hopefully we have two missing. Okay, so we've got Lieutenant Primus. These are the uh, Blood Angels. Lieutenant Primus, Sergeant, Captain Primus, Captain Senoris. I think I took some of these aside because I was scanning them, so I may have just set them aside. So forgive me, but I am missing one or two of those. Now we've got these Imperial Fists. We got the Sergeant, Lieutenant Primus, Captain Senoris, and Muffin. So it looks like I'm missing two right here. But uh, I was going to print out some of my own, just cut them out. And it's fun. it was kind of fun because I was basically just combining those images because they're so similar in Paint.net and uh, editing them. And you know, they'll look good enough. These are the uh, honor badges, so this is how you progress your way. So it's kind of like an imperial seal and showing a one. And on the other side, it says two. That spiky crown, starburst thing. And then these, similarly, one, two, three. Now each squad just has uh, one set of badges, so it's not like you have to keep track of every single soldier's accomplishments, it's just like the squad's accomplishments. Okay, and then we've got the doors. So the doors are rather large, and they're just solid pieces, so there's no like open doors, closed doors, it's just... So we've got the plastic clips. Let's see if we've got enough plastic clips for all the doors. Just to make sure. So there's what a plastic clip looks like. Pretty basic. Jump the door. There's there's a door. Obviously. Another one. Some of these are kind of chewed up. I'll probably have to do a little bit of restoration work on that. Let's just say things like that. Actually, let's just. Let's not do that. Let's just count them out. Okay, so there's there's three, four, five, six, eight, that's different. Six, seven, three, three, five, eight, 
Again, double speed for this one. Nine, that one's kind of chewed up. Doors beat up anyway, so. Uh, ten. That's a nice door. Eleven. Little holes in it. They're all different. Twelve. Thirteen. Fourteen. Fifteen. Sixteen. Seventeen. Eighteen. Nineteen. Twenty. Twenty-one. Twenty-two. Twenty-three. And another clips. Twenty-four. So one clip short, or maybe it just doesn't matter. So one clip short, that's okay. You can always just get that 3D printed. Um, and, oh, I see, these are the bulkhead doors. These are different. So there's three of these. So might be one clip. Let's see. But how hard can it be to print that out or just use a generic piece? So you got three of these, and these clip on somewhere like that. One, two, three, up, up, up. So all those doors. Doors are important. But the thing is, I could see how it wouldn't matter that much because when you open the door, you know, in HeroQuest you replace the open door or the closed door with an open door. But here you just take it off the board. So if you run out, who cares? You just use it again. And I guess you just pick the one that looks the, the best to you. But if you want to have all these doors out on the screen at once, on the board at once, then you're going to need one extra clip somewhere. One thing I noticed, you know, I haven't played this game before, but I have played the computer version that uh, Lurch Brick, one of these homebrew guys, really talented, who made his own game. Um, I noticed that, let's say you open a whole bunch of doors, it's a bad strategy because the guys can shoot from one end of the board to the other, like all the way across. So if you accidentally leave a unblocked line of sight, they can shoot you from really far away. And in the computer game, you know, you're not looking at the entire board all at once anyway. It's kind of scrolling around so that you can zoom in on your little dudes, little space dudes. So, yeah, it's a, <laughs> kind of a new mistake there. Let me just count these out again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 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 I think uh, I have enough to play the game, which is the important thing, but I might be missing one clip somewhere. I might 3D print that. Yeah, I'm fitting it back in the box isn't that, isn't that hard. So the last thing to look at in the unboxing is the blip tokens. So uh, these are what you see on your radar. So it's like alien. You see these blip tokens and then when they, they move around the board and then when they get within line of sight, then they turn into whatever they are. Whatever the monster or alien they're supposed to be. So it's just a little screen on one side. You can easily print these out on chipboard. So there's Gretchen, two points. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
15, 15, a couple of these are torn, some of them are blank. 16, 17, 19, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34. 34 of them. And I think two of them are blank, so it's really like 32 of these blip tokens. So that's the game. Now, oh, whoops, I forgot one thing. Sorry about that. So here, the last bag, you've got these three cards, tiles, whatever, like the character cards in HeroQuest, which are for each team, and they show you the weapons and what they do and the movement, and you flip it over on the back and it's got the commander stuff. Okay? Pretty thick, smooth surface. Then you've got these three, they call them docking claws, so they're blue on one side and then these clip to the edge of the board and this is where the three teams start out. And what about the Eldar? Well I'm going to get to that next. But here's the mission book. I already showed you the mission book in the last video. Twelve missions. Each of the expansions adds four missions. There's the rule book. Tells the story. And I'm going to read it off in another video because we're getting close to the end here. I got things to do tomorrow. So I'll have to do yet another video where I do a dramatic reading of this storyline for Space Crusade rulebook. Eldar Attack. This is the expansion that came with it from the seller and it's missing the box but otherwise it's complete. So I'll show you that real quick here. So Eldar Attack. Again, dramatic reading of the story next time. But what it comes with is a bunch of miniatures. So there should be 10 Eldar, Space Elves. So we've got a guy here with his uh, Shuriken Cannon, or Shuriken Catapult, I guess is really what it's called. And we've got a couple spares there, that one. Another Shuriken Catapult, two. Three. Let's see that guy. It's a cool looking figure. These guys each have one life point. Four. Shuriken Cannon, I think that's what that's called. It's just a vacuum cleaner. Um, what's this weapon called? Clips right on there. Whatever that weapon is called. I think that's a rocket launcher. It's a launcher. So what do we got here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and ten. Okay, well, there's definitely ten guys here. So we got the two uh, bases that hold up the cardboard that shows the uh, tiles, like the entrance and the exit for them. Instead of using a docking claw, they use a teleporter. You call it like a psychic screen or something fancy like that. You just break in here. So they've got this extra board for them. And we've got a tile showing what the Eldar can do. And the leader of the Eldar, the commander, is called the X Arc. Or the Patriarch in the German version, but he's got that. And there's some discrepancy here, so it shows like different stats here versus what's in the rule book. And so people have debated, okay, which one do you go with? Well, you probably want to go with the higher one, because it helps the players. So, okay, so we've got this long weapon, this launcher. This is the Exarch himself, the leader. He's got multiple psionic powers, and every time he takes a hit, he loses one of the cards, if he's still got him to use, and he only has one life point otherwise. But he can last a little longer than the other than the guys. And there's the last guy. So there's actually ten of them. So you, you would either have ten Eldar, 
or you'd have one squad of five plus the three marine squads. So there's another shuriken catapult. And then these are, I think these are flamers. Flame guns. Let's see, what are they called? Okay, there's the missile launcher, shuriken cannon. Oh, LAS cannon. Laser cannon. So that's what it's called. So that's a laser cannon. See, I saw that little gas cannon. I thought a flamer. Uh, in Mission Dreadnought expansion, they do have like flame type weapons. Okay, so the last thing for the Eldar attack expansion are these. These are the ones that clip to those two bases that I showed you. So in, in and out. And there's just a small number of blip tokens, extra blip tokens for these guys. So there's one, two, three, four. Six, seven, eight. Flip them over, and they all say either dummy, <laughs> dummy, decoy, or equipment. Those are the two kinds. So they're mostly mostly dummies, but there's some equipment. So you just go in the bag here. Put that all back together. So yeah, it'll be it'll be fun to play these. But there's only four extra missions for the Eldar. In the last mission, you play with the three squads of Marines and then one squad of Eldar. So these are the opposite of the other cards. It's smooth and shiny and waxy on this side and textured and lined on this other side. So notice they're blue instead of green. So there's new alien event cards, which you can easily tell because they've got a different design there. You flip them over so you got three deploy one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two. All right. Easy to shuffle because of that. Um, you know, Ultra Pro does the same thing with some of their sleeves, where it's like matte on one side, shiny, clear on the other. And then you've got these cards. So you've got the uh, equipment. One, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, nine, twelve. Twelve of those, and then the X arc. So these are kind of like the order cards. But they're also powers. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Very cool. And uh, since I'm doing a little mod already for these, so I'm doing a de magicified mod, um, you can look at my old videos to see what I mean by that. So in my uh, customized version of the world, so these would be like these psionic attacks, and instead of calling them warlocks, or magicians, or seers, they'll just be called wardens. That would be kind of a cool idea. Although, in the German version, they're called patriarchs. But I figure, you know, a warden, um, it kind of goes with the German edition. So in the German version, instead of them being space marines, they're GSG, uh, Galactic Safety Force, Galaxy Safe uh, Squad Force. I'll have to go over those differences. It's, it's pretty interesting. I mean, some people didn't like it because they said, oh, it's, you know, it's toned down, it's censored, it's not as cool. But it has its own story and its own charm. And really, if that was your game growing up, you're probably going to be nostalgic for that rather than, you know, a version from another country that you just discovered in your adult life. But I'm discovering this game for the first time, so I love it. I'm just learning as much as I can about this game, and I would like to play it, and I can't wait to make my own mods for it, really. Um, the people I've talked to have said, yeah, just play it like a GM, because if you just play it according to the rules, yeah, it's fun, but, I mean, it's just a lot of just numbers, and if you just want to add some more life to it, some more story, some more fun, some more creativity, go for it. I mean, why not? It doesn't just have to be, okay, you killed all the monsters, you killed all the monsters again. Oh. 
It was staring at my face the whole time. I'm sorry, folks. So I'm not missing this red one. I was using that as a demo. So I'm only missing one of these tiles. So really, that'll be easy to fix. So one tile, one card. Not bad. And I got a great place for this, so I have no room to complain. I left a good review to the guy in Board Game Geek that I got it from. And I do business again. I told him, hey, if you find any pieces, um, I'll, I'll buy them off you. Even though I can easily make these myself, which I'll probably be doing that next. I just got to get to the print shop. So there's the board. I'm not going to set it up this time, but... So those are all the Space Marine groups. So you've got... I don't know the names of all of them, but... I mean, you, if you collect Warhammer 40,000, you could probably say exactly what each of those groups are. Like the founding groups. You know, the Emperor, he's this guy who brought mankind back from the brink, and he uh, set up, you know, these super soldiers, these space marines, and they're going to cleanse the universe from the threats of the space hulks that are coming back from warp space filled with monsters. Because they really are bad guys. They really are trying to invade. They call them aliens because they're from... They're not from regular space. They're from another part of the galaxy or another dimension. The galaxy, intergalactic planetary. Well, I think that's enough for, for tonight. That is Space Crusade. And I suppose the video wouldn't be complete unless we looked at the inside of the box. Where we've got... Oops, do it again. Okay, we've got the instructions. This tells you how to um, assemble everything. I mean, it's pretty straightforward. I think the gene stealers I've got, their arms are glued in, but I don't mind that. See there, that's what I was looking for earlier. Okay, and that's how you set it up. Oh, that's how you do it. Okay. That was already assembled. And of course, the awesome artwork. There's actually two different box designs. This is the second one I mean I think it's cool it's a kind of a realist more realistic looking one of course the kind of scary those guys look not exactly like a xenomorph but in the, the original box art which look, looks similar to the illustration on the rule book you know it's a full body view and these look a lot more like xenomorphs in that one which is maybe why they redid it this alien was a big deal flip it over Oops. We got these kids again. You know, it's they've been playing Hero Quest and Battle Masters, and now they're playing Space Crusade. There's some different kids, but this this actually looks different from the game. And Hispazard on on um, Yield In, which is a great place for Hero Quest and other games, um, he pointed out that you know this is different. And he also showed me a photo, which I featured in the other video, and it might actually be in the slideshow here eventually is it shows another picture from an advertisement for StarQuest where the game looks very different. So there are different prototypes. But look at this. This looks like something from White Dwarf magazine from Warhammer 40,000. See, see that illustration? That's not how it looks. The card art looks slightly different. These figures are most likely uh, metal that have been painted solid color just to kind of look like they're the finished product plastic so it looks pretty cool and, and there's little story bits sprinkled around so I was working on translating I'm mean, just doing an online translation of the German version because my German is not very good other people have done this sort of stuff but I just I just think it's fun to kind of just do it myself because I didn't have the benefit of you know playing this game when I was 12 years old or whatever, so I'm just discovering it now. But yeah, hope you enjoyed. So I'll probably do another video on this, and I definitely want to do another Hero Quest video with a dramatic reading of one of the Dave Morris novels. But we'll just have to pick up later because this weekend is going to be busy. So thanks everybody who tuned in. Thanks for watching. Uh, thanks for supporting us here on Hero Quest fans on Twitch and also XSC3, home of HeroQuest fans, on YouTube. Check out our Discord, and also check with us on you and, and so forth. So thanks, everybody. Have a great night.
Uh, let me just do one final shout out to anybody new that we got. We got, uh, yeah, the same people. So, uh, Delot, Delotsk, sorry. I love mispronouncing everyone's name. I'm just kidding. Um, Lanaray, Six Flags Magic Mountain. Thank you all for joining. Okay. Take care, everybody. Stay safe. Don't, don't get uh, eaten by any chain stealers. <laughs>